the start? Yeah. Okay, can you say hi? Hi. Hi. So today's a special day. It is your grandma's birthday. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to say happy birthday, grandma? Happy birthday, grandma. So today we picked a fairy tale because grandma loves fairy tales. So we are going to read The Elves and the Shoemaker. Sound good? Yeah. All right. Can you have a seat in your chair, baby cakes? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to stay up here? Okay. Whoa. Ooh, you melted. <laughs> All right. So this is from a Brothers Grimm story, but it's retold and illustrated by Jim. I think it's Lamarche. Lamarche. There was once a good shoemaker who, through a spell of bad luck, had become very poor. Finally, he had just enough leather to make one last pair of shoes. Still, it is a fine piece of leather, said his wife, as soft as butter, yet as strong as your hands. Tonight, dear wife, I will cut the leather, said the shoemaker, and first thing in the morning, I will sew the shoes. The next morning when the couple went into the workshop, they were flabbergasted by what, what they found. There on the work table stood two shoes, perfectly finished, not a single stitch out of place. But, but who, how, sputtered the shoemaker. His wife could only stare. Just then a dandy gentleman came into the shop. What magnificent shoes, please, I must try them on, he said. The shoes fit perfectly. It was as if they had been made just for him. He was so pleased that he paid double the price. Now the shoemaker had enough money left to buy leather for two more pairs of shoes. I love you too. Again that evening, the shoemaker cut out the leather for the shoes and went to bed. And once again in the morning, there were the shoes, finished. Buyers were not lacking for these either. And as before, they were so pleased they paid double the price. Now the shoemaker had enough money to buy leather for four more pairs of shoes. The next morning, just as before, there were the shoes, already made. On and on it went. Whenever the, whatever the shoemaker cut out in the evening was finished in the morning. I have doggy. You have a doggy? Yeah, I have kitty cats. You do have kitty cats. What is that though? Doggy. That's a doggy. What color is that doggy? Um, black. Black? Yeah. Soon the news of the splendid shoes spread throughout the town and the shoemaker and his wife were no longer poor. <laughs> Mary likes partner. She likes this? Yeah. Oh, good. Mary likes partners. Oh, she likes being partners? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. One evening, not long before Christmas, as the shoemaker cut more leather for his shoes, his wife spoke. Dear husband, who has made us so rich? What if we were to stay up tonight and see who comes to our shop? The shoemaker agreed. So that night they lit a small lamp in the hall, hid behind their coats and waited. As the clock struck midnight, they heard the creak of a window and the scuttle of small feet. Peeking out from behind the coats, they saw two tiny children sneak into the workshop. They were poorly shod and they were only in raggedy sacks for warmth. <laughs> Elves, the shoemaker's wife whispered. <laughs> the tiny elves tiptoed across the room and climbed up onto the table. Then, humming and whistling, they began to stitch and sew and hammer so quickly with their little fingers that the shoemaker and his wife could not believe their eyes. did not stop until all the shoes were finished and stood lined up on the table. Sturdy riding boots. Oh yeah, you're right. 
delicate slippers. I lost my space. Uh, dancing, feather light dancing shoes and heavy clogs for work. Then the elves tiptoed out of the workshop, up the stairs, and out the window. The next morning, the wife said, the little elves have made us rich. We must give them something in return. They run around with so little on, they must be freezing. I'll make them a warm dress, coat, and little pants, and knit them each a pair of stockings. And I shall be happy to make them each a fine pair of shoes, said the shoemaker. They went right to work, and that evening they laid out the presents on the work table. Then, like before, they hid behind the coats and waited. Aww. What do you see? I have kitty sleeping. Yeah, that kitty is sleeping. At midnight, the elves quietly slipped into the shop, ready for another night's work. But instead of pieces of leather, they found the beautiful presents. At first, they were too astonished to move. Then they hugged their new warm clothes and quickly put them on. When they were... Isn't that cute? When they were dressed, they leaped and bounced around the room singing, Now we're elves so fine to see, no longer cobblers we will be. They jumped over chairs, raced around the shop, and finally ran out the door. The click and clack of their new shoes echoed through the streets. From that time on, the little elves were not seen again, but the shoemaker and his wife lived a long and happy life. And that's the end. Did you like the elves and the shoemaker? Are you being silly? All right, you want to come say bye? Bye, Grandma. <laughs> bye. Let me say bye-bye. Bye-bye.